In this video, I am going to provide you with what one of the building code books says about non-uniform height risers. And this would be a situation where you have a stairway and a walkway where the walkway might be sloping. Now, the stairs need to be level. The treads need to be um, horizontally level. But in some cases, uh, you live in San Francisco, um, this uh, could be a problem. So the stairs will need to be level, but the walkway um, is allowed to slope a maximum of 1 in 12 units. And that would look something like this, where you have a sloping walkway. And again, you see this a lot in areas where you have um, steep sloping streets and you're probably going to wonder you know you're after you're done watching this video you're going to grab a tape measure and go check out some of these and you're going to think wait a minute this doesn't work it's sloping more than that well that's probably something that the city would have approved because there is nothing else they can do about it so keep that in mind when you're designing a stairway you know you want to stick within the guidelines if possible and then, of course, ask the building department if you can, um, if they'll provide you with any flexibility for that in uh, on your project. So these aren't written in stone um, building codes. Otherwise, you would have you wouldn't have any stairs where these sloping surfaces are more than that. So I hope that makes sense. Now let's take a look at what a one in twelve unit of measurement is for every twelve inches or one foot, you're allowed to go up one inch. If you go two feet, you're allowed to go up two inches. Three feet, three inches. This represents a one in 12 ratio. Now, if you're looking for a degree, what would be the degree on this? It would be 4.8 degrees, or it would be about an 8% slope. So if that helps you with your project. And again, these are one foot increments. You're allowed to go up every one inch. So here's our stairway and our sloping surface. We have a maximum for public stairs at seven inches. This is the riser height. Um, you're not allowed to exceed this in most cases. Again, you might be able to receive some type of a variance from your building department to allow you to mod make modifications if necessary. So. Four foot wide stairway. If we go four feet with our one in 12 ratio, that would be four inches that we would subtract from our seven inch riser, giving us three inches. So this would be the maximum for a situation like this. This could be longer. This could be three and a half inches. It just wouldn't be able to be two and a half inches without your uh, local building department's approval um, if you live in an area where you have building departments, and they follow the rules um, set out by most building codes. And what holds true for the bottom also holds true for the top. If you have a sloping walkway at the top, you're allowed to have the seven inches and the three inches use the same ratio for the sloping walkway and the stairs. And again, don't lock these figures into your head. Seven inches is most of the time is going to be the maximum riser for a public stairway. However, if you're building a set of resi residential stairs for a house, um, you might be able to go with seven and three quarters. You might be able to even go with eight inches in some cases. And if that wasn't confusing enough, you can have something like this where the walkway slopes in the opposite direction. So again, the maximum height for the sloping surface that intersects into your horizontally level stairs is going to be a one increment for every 12 increments of measurements um, horizontally. So you're allowed to go up one increment vertically for every 12 increments this way. So hope that makes sense. I will also be putting a um, building code reference number, something that you might not find in some of these other videos, but I think they're actually handy to actually make a statement in a video 
and uh, actually provide the facts that you are using to make the video. So I will put that in the video description box. The reason why I'm doing that and not putting it in the video is because some of these numbers might change in the future and I'll be able to go into the video description box and change it. I won't be able to do that in the video.